Hello, welcome to the Social Capital Guide podcast. My name is Bavon Joseph, aka the Social Capital Guy, and I will be your host. After working on Wall Street for 15 plus years and running a successful nonprofit for the last seven, I decided to pivot to share my knowledge and network to help others find ways to increase their social capital. I believe that relationships are at the core of life, especially in business, and your network is your net worth. This podcast focuses on what I call the three C's, careers, community, and capital. And when I talk about capital, I mean both social and financial capital. So let's get into it. TikTok. Hello, everyone. It's Bhavan here, the social capital guy. And this is a bonus episode of the podcast. Sometimes I just have some random things on my mind that I'm itching to get out. And today is one of those days I want to talk about something that's really near and dear to me, which is entrepreneurship, especially when it comes to building a brand from scratch, building a brand without resources, without experience, and just literally doing it for the first time on your own as well, without a team. So in today's social media culture, we're um, all obsessed. A lot of people are obsessed with results. Yet most of us don't see, most people don't see how successful companies are built from scratch, especially social impact, nonprofits, and brands. During the last seven years or so, I've built one of Chicago's fastest, most impactful nonprofits, and I feel compelled to share my experience building that organization, in particular that brand. Taking inspiration from my own lived experience, I created the Greenwood Project in 2015. I originally had the idea for the organization back in 2013, while I was still working on Wall Street on trading floors in New York and Chicago. So my career on Wall Street began back in 1999. I was a computer hardware repair guy on the trading floor of a global bank. And although I had no knowledge of the stock market, trading, etc., I was fascinated by the environment and just wanted to learn as much as I could about it. So during about the subsequent 15 years of my career, I spent time in New York and Chicago, like I said, rising eventually to a position of about like a senior technology officer at a hedge fund. So I've, you know, haven't seen the lack of diversity on Wall Street firsthand throughout my career. I launched the Greenwood Project to introduce Black and Latinx students to careers in finance. To date, over 600 students have been served by the organization. So very impactful over the last seven years or so. Very proud of what I was able to create, the legacy of the organization, and just the personal impact I've had on so many young people in the city of Chicago and many other cities as well. So though I was working to you know help students of color and make the world a better place, not everyone agreed with or liked what I was doing, surprisingly. I have been subjected to criticism, negativity thrown my way, and even racist remarks online because of my public, very unapologetic commitment to helping Black and Latinx students in particular. Entrepreneurs can learn valuable lessons from those who disagree with them, in my opinion. And these lessons can actually help them grow as well as entrepreneurs and also help grow your business, surprisingly. The purpose of this particular episode of this podcast is to help other aspiring entrepreneurs who may be experiencing something similar or who might be who might find my insight into building a brand without any experience or resources helpful. So what got me writing or speaking about this? episode in particular was a comment that someone recently made. The exact words were that Greenwood Project's social media footprint looked like the Bavon show, end quote. So I believe that your brand is more than just your business. It is who you are as a person. In the end, your brand's image and narrative will be formed by what you build and how you build it. And in the beginning of Greenwood, before anyone knew about Greenwood, people knew me. 
my first partner didn't invest in Greenwood. They invested in my idea. And they trusted me to go out and execute the plans, the thing that I told them that I could do. I presented them a plan and a roadmap to partner with them to help build a brand. But I had to put the work in. I had to prove that my idea and my concept could work. So during, you know, for example, my first meeting with a potential corporate partner, this was probably back in 2015 or so, I had no board members, no board of directors, no funding, no students, no curriculum, no staff, no formed business entity, none of that stuff. The only thing I had was my idea and my passion to expose students of color to careers in finance. But I went into those meetings and my, my pitch was so compelling that I gave these companies and these potential partners no choice but to join me in this journey. Greenwood became my identity over time. It was, it was in my veins. It, it became part of my DNA. I lived the brand. Every time I left my house, I wore something Greenwood related. And I talked about my business nonstop on social media. Those of you who know me can attest to this firsthand. I was literally online talking every single day, posting something. You just could not shut me up about my brand. So yes, people began to view Greenwood Project and Bavon as one. Creating a brand and a narrative for my business was something I had to do myself. Who was going to do it for me? Now, people who know me personally know that I'm an extreme introvert at heart. But the Greenwood Project and starting my business forced me to find my voice and speak up. And now, like I said, you literally can't shut me up. I have a podcast that should tell you everything you need to know. So I never wanted to stand in front of a microphone, speak about my accomplishments, or be the center of attention. Even today, I still feel uncomfortable talking about myself, to be honest with you. I rather interview or talk to other people about their stories and shine a light on their stories. Finding my voice comes from talking about my passion, my drive, my motivation, and what I feel is my purpose. And ultimately, the brand, the brand of Greenwood, my brand um, as well. And when I find something that I'm passionate about, like the Greenwood Project, and I feel is my purpose in life, I do whatever I can to make it work. And I, and I go out and I try to exceed any and all expectations. Once I start obsessing over an idea or project, I will not stop until it's done. I just find a way. As an entrepreneur, you just have to find a way. You know, and as, as, as an entrepreneur building a brand in particular, I can give you some insight into a few things that I learned on my own and things I had to figure out as well. Number one, public speaking. I was fearful of public speaking before Greenwood. And after realizing I had to overcome this fear to compete in business pitch competitions, I found a way. And to date, my only loss in a, in a uh, pitch competition is second place. I literally won every other pitch competition I entered. I didn't care if there were two people in the audience or 200, 400, 500 people. I was saying it loud and proud when it came to talking about my business. Two, social media. I realized that it was necessary to use the internet and social media to tell my story of the Greenwood Project and to reach young people, because that's my primary audience, and companies as well to get them on board. So I used my prior website building skills, technology skills, and I learned everything I needed to know about Canva, Hootsuite, content management systems, Instagram algorithms, Google Analytics, you name it. I Googled it and I tried to figure it out on my own, and I did eventually. There were people who actually thought that there was a whole social media team a person <laughs> driving the social media uh, for the organization when in fact it was literally just me. Three, copywriting. I had to learn how to write copy for social media and for press releases. I had never done it before, but I have always been someone who's been very passionate about writing and doing the copy for the organization over the last seven years helped me sharpen those skills and now it's something that I love doing. I love 
coming up with creative ways to say things, to message things, to um to relate to audiences, especially young people. I think I have a special uh, connection with young people, given all the work I've done with them over the last couple of years and knowing what appeals to them. Three, marketing. So again, ties into copywriting, uh, social media, but marketing in general, I just watched a ton of videos on YouTube about marketing strategies for nonprofits, marketing strategies as a whole. I had to create newsletters and fundraising campaigns. I started using tools like MailChimp. I just found a way to do it. I literally made no excuses. I know it had to get done. And if I didn't do it, it wasn't going to get done. So I had to figure these things out. Five, the cool factor. So this is very important. I feel like this is something that a lot of organizations, especially nonprofits, overlook or don't even consider or not aware of the cool factor. So I think it is vital for your brand to have what I call the cool factor when you're trying to reach young people in particular. My storytelling skills, which I developed over time, you know, building my organization and social media savvy enabled me to tap into the hearts and minds of young people. Over time, I built a brand that attracted high school and college students almost 100% organically to the program. I never had to spend a lot of money on marketing or had a marketing team or, or anything like that. It was also imperative that I told my own story, which again, I'm an introvert, so it was a little uncomfortable for me to do, but really important and critical because if I was trying to recruit high school students and college students, I had to establish myself as credible. So in telling my story, I gained credibility and that credib credibility has um, really helped me a lot Again, not always being comfortable telling my own story, but it has led to um, a lot of young people looking at me as, listen, you were able to do it. You went through the struggle. You can help us figure this out. So let's go. So it really helped me convince young people and, and donors and partners to get on board. So <clears throat> I've been paying attention to a lot of... Um, individuals who lead organizations, who are personalities uh, as far as coaches, celebrities, uh, philanthropists, et cetera. And one person that I pay close attention to is Deion Sanders. So when it comes to the cool factor, coach Deion Sanders is a prime example of, uh, of this and how it's done. His success, his fame, his style, and his swagger, it's all cool to players. Everybody wants to play with him, play for him. They all want to come along for the ride with him. Recently, I read an article about uh, a recruit that he was able to flip to um, come to Colorado State, where he's at now coaching. And this player said, he's a five-star recruit, and he said, Coach Sanders uh, really is an impactful person. The way he speaks, the way he talks about things. He said it also mattered that Coach Sanders is a black man like himself in a sport that hasn't had many black coaches. It's especially, I think, important to highlight this because I started the Greenman Project as a result of my experience as a person of color on Wall Street for almost 20 years. And as the only person of color in the majority of spaces I worked in during that time. So in essence, I was in a sport that <laughs> didn't have many people who looked like me. And now, fast forward all these years later, I started this organization to help young people see themselves in the organize, in the business as well. And when it comes to trust and credibility, I think experience gives you credibility and it enables you to speak from a position of strength, which builds trust and loyalty. And I've worked with over six, 700 young people of color since starting my organization in 2015. They all came to Greenwood because they trusted the brand and respected his reputation and track record. But brands are also shaped by who leads them and who is their face of the organization. I think entrepreneurs deserve a ton of credit for just figuring things out. I built a brand from scratch without any experience or resources and literally by myself, no team. In response to the person who felt that the brand had become or looked like the Bavon show, 
I want to ask them a question, a few questions, actually. What if the opposite were true? What if I had the money and the resources to hire a full marketing, social media, branding team for my business? How successful would I be right out the, right out the gate? I wouldn't have to wait six, seven years to say, now I have this established brand. I'll ride out the gate. I would have this whole team access to resources to build a brand. How successful would I be? But despite my lack of resources, I managed to figure things out. And things turned out pretty damn well, I must say. Now, the last thing I'll say as I wrap this up is seven years is a pretty fast turnaround for an organization to grow the way the Greenwood Project did, as far as building brand equity, raising money, reaching students, that kind of thing. There were some things that happened along the way, one being 2020, George Floyd and his murder. A lot of firms flocked to the table to partner with us and, and grow and invest. And yes, that was a catalyst, sadly, for the exponential growth that we experienced. And as far as entrepreneurs are concerned, Sometimes it's hard to stay motivated, especially when you're getting online negativity and comments and sometimes racist remarks thrown at you as well. But you got to be patient, believe in your why, never forget your why, never forget why you started what you started and the purpose of doing the thing that you're doing. You got to trust the process and sometimes you got to own the process as well. Only you can do the thing you do the way you do it. So don't be dissuaded by the negativity, especially by people online who have no idea what it takes to build a brand, no idea what it takes to put the time in and the work in and the effort in, sometimes for free. It is a thankless career sometimes, building an organization, building a brand. But once you get there and you get to that point where you can look back and say, wow, I built a very successful brand and the work really paid off. So the last thing I'll say is every day you wake up, you won't be motivated, but you should be disciplined. TikTok. I appreciate you tuning in and listening to the Social Capital Guy podcast. I'll keep bringing these bonus episodes to you over the course of season one. Please follow us at the Social Capital Guy on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all social media platforms. And also check out our website at thesocialcapitalguy.com. I'm your host, Bavon Joseph. Thank you.